So I'd like to call this February 27th, 2023 meeting of the Concord Select Board to order. And we'll start as usual with the consent agenda. Could I have a motion? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay, all in favor? Um, Aye. Oh, and also I should just note that Mary Hartman, a member, will not be able to join us tonight. So we are four, but we are a quorum. Okay, and could I just note on the January 30th, 2023 20, minutes on page six, um, it lists the consent agenda uh, and shows the TIF was on that, and I believe we pulled it off. No, I think we did the vote, but it wasn't sufficient. We did we yeah. did a vote, yes. but it wasn't a sufficient vote. Oh, we and, okay. and so council has now told us, well, actually, it wasn't council, it was... The state. The state uh, told agency. us we need to yeah. go through a more elaborate procedure. Okay, good. Thank you. On the TIF thing? Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll get to the TIF. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. All right. Um of the vote. Oh yeah. So all in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Now to the town manager's report. Thank you and, and good evening. Um, we are preparing for a storm response beginning later this evening. We do expect um, a significant storm starting at about 11 o'clock this evening. We will have our, our uh, winter operations crew coming in at 11 p.m. We will have our snow desk covered beginning at 11 p.m. Um, any resident who's interested or has any concerns about non-public safety response, they can reach our winter operations crew at 978-318-3220. Um, that, that's something that we have operated for years. We've actually had the same person, Tish Hopkins, who has been answering that phone, I heard earlier today for 25 years, but wow. I'm not sure that we've ever advertised that, but that is available um, 24 hours a day during our snow response. Uh, we do expect the the storm to cause significant issues with the morning commute, but hopefully that will taper off. And in the interest of time, the only other update I wanted to provide this evening is on the DHCD family shelter. As I let you know, uh, over the weekend, last Friday, February 24th, we were able to have our second meeting with DHCD staff. Uh, we had several town staff members attend that, as well as Dr. Hunter, and both Senator Barrett and Representative Cataldo were also in attendance at that meeting. So what the, the new information that we learned as a result of that meeting is that there are nine parties who have been living long term at the Best Western. And I mentioned parties because uh, some are individual, some are family or, or non-related um, parties living at the shelter. As I mentioned before, this this was news to us. We did not know that anybody was living there long term and um and we definitely have resources available to people and and we do hope that they reach out to our community services coordinator but six of the nine parties will be staying at the best western three have been offered um alternative accommodations and they they were all offered al alternative accommodations three of them have availed themselves of that six will be staying uh, the opening date for the shelter has been moved from March 1 to March 13th. Um, this may get pushed out again, but probably not for any significant amount of time. DHCD will still rent all remaining 99 rooms, eventually up to 90 rooms of the would be used for sheltering uh, families or individuals on an emergency basis, and the other nine will be used for offices. Um, at this point in time, DHCD intends to use the facility as an intake center, replacing the center that they have set up at Devon's. And as part of an intake facility, they will be offering emergency housing to um, people for three to five days and case management services before they're transferred into um, longer term housing options. DHCD is interested in using this facility uh, for longer term housing as well, but we are still working with them on um, a code, a building code review that out, that item is still outstanding with us. And the issue there is that um, our building commissioner needs to be sure that 
the facility meets the code requirements that would be required for housing that is in excess of, of 31 days. Um, at this point in time, mock making opportunities count is still identified as the on-site case manager, although um, as of Friday, I don't believe that they had finalized their contract with DHCD. Um, our community services coordinator, Bonnie Wilbur, has been in touch with Mock, and she stands ready, willing, and able to coordinate any um, volunteer or donation opportunities. We, we've been hearing from a lot of people that they're interested in helping, but there's we don't have anything to any advice to be able to provide people at this point in time because they're still trying to. Um, to work that through. So I will stop there and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, questions for the town manager. Yes, Terry. Uh, when you say intake center, um, I guess that means someone greets the people, offers emergency shelter. Um, is that the crux of it or is, or what else? So um, Yes, they they would be connected with a case manager who would um, understand what the need is of of the individual or family presenting, and then set them up with services. Um, so three to five days would be is what DHCD considers emergency housing, and that would be provided on site at the Best Western, and then anything after that at this point in time. Um, people would be moving on to another housing situation. One thing I did not mention is um, a, there's certainly a, a concern about school age children and, and what they do. Um, DESE, the Department of uh, Education was in attendance at that, at that meeting as well. And what they said is that they do not encourage um, placement of when when somebody is in that situation, emergency housing for three to five days, they're they're really setting aside educational needs just for that period of time. So, uh, for for people who are there for emergency shelter, they will not not be likely to um, be entering the public school system for that short of a time. Other questions for the town manager. Okay, for my chair's remarks, I just want to call your attention to one thing, which is uh, the upcoming Warner's Pond uh, public meeting. So uh, I'm right now uh, sharing on the Zoom the flyer that went out. It also has a 2D barcode that you can scan to take a survey. Um, about the future of White Pond, uh, as you may be aware, a uh, Warner's Pond. Excuse me, the other pond, the other one of three W ponds in Concord. So, <clears throat> Warner's Pond. Uh, there was a previous plan for dredging and funds that were allocated to that purpose, uh, but the bid that came back was several times the amount that had been allocated, and so now there are alternatives being proposed. And the survey walks through the alternatives and tries to get your feedback on them. Um, and there will also be this public meeting on Thursday. Um, it is uh, going to be here uh, in the hearing room, uh, but there also are Zoom access instructions uh, on the flyer. So if you look at the town meeting calendar, you'll see that and uh, you can join. Uh, just share all this because. Uh, previously, not all the information was uh, available. Okay, with that, we will move to the termination of the uh, TIF agreement. So again, to provide a little context on this, or maybe uh, the town manager would like to, we had a previous agreement that provided a preferential treatment um, for the property uh, that's often called the Junction Village site off of Winthrop Street. And uh, there was an agreement uh, with the Junction, Junction Village Limited Partnership to provide preferential tax treatment. Um, I have recused myself from uh, deliberations regarding the site, but I don't know, terminating this agreement doesn't seem like a, a kind of a conflict to me um, because the developers included their 
pursuit of the agreement. Do you have the memorandum in the packet? Yeah. It is? Okay. Yeah. All right. So that explains why it is that we now need uh, three different motions to conclude this arrangement. So could I have a motion unless there's further discussion or deliberation? Move to terminate the tax increment financing TIF agreement dated as December 2020, the TIF agreement between the town of Concord and Junction Village ALF Limited Partnership, the developer relating to the Christopher Heights Assisted Living Facility proposed to be constructed on land identified as assessor's parcel number 8D-2013-1, the project. Do I have a second for that? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to petition the EACC. I'm not sure what that is. Executive office or whatever. Let me look that up. I one second. I'll skip that one while Carrie looks that up. We'll do the last one. Move to authorize the town manager or her designee to do all things necessary to effectuate these actions. Um, seems a little out of sequence. Yeah, it does. We... All right, we'll wait. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Move to petition the Economic Assistance Coordinating Council to decertify the TIF agreement as the developer has provided notice that it has no intention of meeting its expected completion timeframes in Section B3, i.e. expected completion by July 1st, 2022, or no later than July 1st, 2023, in the event of construction delays. Yes. And move to authorize the town manager or a designee to do all things necessary to effectuate these actions. Do I have a second? Second. <clears throat> all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now we'll move to our next item, which is a public hearing for the application of a transfer of license uh, and change of manager for Artichoke Incorporated. Okay, move to open the public hearing. Which is doing business as Vintages, Adventures in Wine to Ms. Megan K. Elwell. So could the applicant step forward? Okay, move to open the public hearing. Uh, do I have a second for that? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, have a seat. Uh, is the light green on your microphone there? Uh, yes. Okay, yes. excellent. Thank you. Ms. Elwell. So can you describe a little bit about your application? I, I think we have the materials. Okay. But um, so Vintages has been in business as it is for um, 23 years now. Um, and the current owners are looking to move on to other projects. It's quite some time. Um, and they're handing the business off to me. So we're just in the process of uh, doing what needs to be done in terms of transferring the license um, and continuing the business as is. Okay. Now, I did have a couple of questions. I mean, one was about the inventory. It appears that there is some inventory that remains from the former owners and will continue to be on site. Yes. But then you, and, and it doesn't sound like there's a transfer of inventory or that you're purchasing inventory from them, or is that part of just the $1 arrangement? Yes. Yes. It's, oh, okay. all, it's all included. It's a very, uh, very, very generous. Uh, I was going to say that. Yeah, okay. it's uh, very much a family kind of um, atmosphere in this entire transaction. If I could find a word to describe it, it would be kind of a family transition. I see. Okay. Yeah, because uh, some of that inventory is quite valuable. I and delicious. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, and do you intend to continue operating the store in, in a similar vein? I mean, uh, Absolutely. Um, I've been a wine professional for about a decade now. Um, I've been with uh, Vintages for uh, cusping on four years. Um, it's a very unique and special um, store, as, particularly as far as wine goes, um, which is how I ended up there. Uh, I'm not. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, you were seeking this destination and you arrived there. And if, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. for sure. Um, but to summarize, yes, it will be continue very much as is. Um, there won't be any lottery or, you know, kind of lower end things of that nature um, moving forward. I can okay. plan to keep it much the same. Yeah. I don't know if you all are familiar with vintages, but it's a highly specialized wine store, I would say. Um, so, okay. 
any questions regarding the uh, other aspects of the application? No. Any anything? Okay. Um, then we'll have a motion. Um, you have to take comment from. Oh, excuse me. That's right. Uh, so we will now open to uh, comment from the public. Are there any comments from the public on this application of transfer of license? Okay, seeing none, seeing none on Zoom. If you're, if you're on Zoom, you can indicate you want to make a comment by using your raise hand function. Okay, now we, we can take the a, motion. Should we have a wine tasting? Uh -huh. we have that might be considered, uh, you know, maybe might compromise our judgment. <laughs> Need some. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, move to close the public hearing. All right. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Move to approve the application of a transfer of license and change of manager for Artichoke Incorporated DBA Vintages Adventures in Wine to Ms. Megan K. Elwell. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great luck with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So we are actually a little ahead of schedule um, for the business that we were going to do before the uh, the Taniel Town Meeting public hearing. So, uh, and of course, we're not going to be taking up reviewing the Town Meeting Warrant Articles item. Um, we could do nominations mm -hmm. and appointments. Okay. Nominations to the Civil War Monument Task Force. Catherine McGrath at 134 Belknap Street to complete an unexpired term to conclude at the completion of the project. And Climate Action Committee, Karen Gibson of 1641 Main Street for a term to expire May 30th, 2024. Jerry Frankel of 132 Jenny Dugan Road for a term to expire April 30th, 2025. Janet Miller of 1647 Main Street for a term to expire April 30th, 2025. Michael McDonald of 208 Wright Road for a term to expire May 30th, 2024. Cheryl Baggin of 3 Bolton Road for a term to expire April 30th, 2025. Ben Slayton of 135 Hillside Avenue for a term to expire April 30th, 2025. Gavin Colber of 88 Old Marlboro Road for a term to expire April 30th, 2025. Jake Swenson of 140 Nut Meadow Crossing for a term to expire May 30th, 2024. Paul Kirshen of 38 Longfellow Road for a term to expire May 31st, 2024. John Bulduck of 58 Stowe Road, Unit 9 for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. Ryan Crounts of 49 Indian Pipe Lane for a term to expire May 31st, 2024, Brad Hubbard Nelson of 225 Neshotic Road for a term to expire April 30th, 2025, and Courtney Eaton of 141 Monson Road for a term to expire May 31st, 2024, and Planning Board, Robert Almeida of 28 Comerford Road to complete an unexpired term to conclude on May 31st, 2024. Thanks for that. And also I would just note that following the charge that we have for the Climate Action Committee, the initial membership is 13, which means that a quorum will be seven members. Um, also, there is one member whose term will expire very shortly, uh, but we're just getting them on board to get us a good start. So is that 13 people? It's 13 people. Okay. Yeah. Can that how many we're going to have permanently? No. The as the charge states, uh right. as members roll off, it will decline until it gets to nine members. Okay. Okay. Oh. Now we're ready for appointments. Move to appoint Kate Schartner of 888 Sudbury Road as a full member representative to the Historic Districts Commission for the Concord Museum for a term to expire January 1st, 2027 to the Historic Districts Commission. Okay. Move to appoint Kathleen Reedy of 125 Paul Revere Road for a second term to expire May 31st, 2026 to the Library Committee. 
Move to appoint Rick Miller of 300 Main Street for a retroactive appointment for a second term from June 1st, 2021 to May 31st, 2024. Gavin Morrissey of 38 Aurora Lane for a retroactive appointment for a second term from June 1st, 2022 to May 31st, 2025. Jennifer Ubaldino of 38 Tra Crabtree Road for a second term to expire May 31st, 2026 to the trustees of town donations. Do you have a second for that? Second. One more. Oh, we do. Have, we have West Concrete One Advisory more. Committee. Move Sorry. to appoint Susan, I apologize if I don't pronounce this right, Malo Dezeniak of 392 Border Road for retroactive appointment for a second term from June 1st, 2022 to May 31st, 2025 to the West Concord Advisory Commission. Okay, now. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 And can I just confirm that you did read uh, Robert Almeida's name? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Um, so one question, Carrie. I think I heard that you were not going to be in a position to present the legal budget item tonight. That's correct. I yeah, don't so have maybe we could take your statement on that and see when we will get back to it. Sure. Um, I, as soon as the next meeting it's it's um partially prepared i, I just okay. haven't completed so as soon as you can schedule it as long as it's not march 20th not no. as long as it's not march 20th March 20th. <laughs> but, numbers okay yeah so we will not be taking up that item tonight yeah. um and so then that brings us uh to correspondence which um in our packet i would uh just uh acknowledge that we received a large amount of correspondence this week um, and that's included in our packet. Um, there were some letters I would also note that we received today, obviously too late to include in the packet, but there were 11 letters that were included. Uh, there were uh, about eight of them that were related to the emergency family shelter uh, and a couple for the Hanscom Field development one about the Patriots Day Parade. Um, so that's the correspondence for this week. And I do believe we have a few minutes that we could take public comment now before the public hearing. We'd need to conclude at uh, 6.56 or 6.57 to be able to start the public hearing on time. So uh, please, if you have a public comment, come and um, state your name and address and make your comment. Ellen Quackenbush, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Ellen Quackenbush, 206 Prairie Street for Concord for Ukraine. And you'll note the correspondence that was in your package. The Public Ceremony Celebration Committee met this morning at 8 a.m. to review the criteria for inclusion in community <clears throat> committee sponsored events. I wanted to make three points. <clears throat> One, there was significant interest from the public. Seven people attended, despite the early time, with each speaking during the public comment period. The public is clearly in, invested in how town events are managed. The committee only focused on Patriots, the Patriots Day Parade, perhaps in response to several groups requesting to march and being denied. The committee handed out a 15-point list of criteria for participation, allowing color guards, marching bands, reenactors, public officials, and specifically excluding, quote, units that are, to any degree, political or commercial. The public noted that the exclusion of political entities would exclude groups such as the League of Women Voters, and some groups, perhaps such as Concord Can, that marched last year. Finally, during their discussion, the community modified the participants Participation in the Patriots Day Parade to be the sole discretion of the committee, specifically mentioning, and I'm sorry, you can see this in the notes, they're concerned that the select board might get involved. I think that this violates the committee's charge, revised December 2022, that states that the committee has complete charge with the approval of the select board of public ceremonies. We don't believe that any committee 
should have the last word on a public event as important as the celebration of our nation's birth. Patriots Day is a time for patriots. And the U.S. has been actively involved for over one year in the brave Ukrainian patriots fight for their freedom. We respectfully request, and this was in my our letter as well, that the select board review the committee's criteria for the Patriots Day Parade and ask if they revisit their denial for the conquered for Ukraine's participation. Thank you. Thanks for your comment. Other comments from the public? My name is Victoria Weisloch, um, Pan Nimrod Drive, and I'm here today to um, express my concerns about the homeless family shelter. Uh, specifically, I'm concerned that um, the town has placed an undue reliance on the expertise and resources of the mock organization without thoroughly examining their capacity to deliver the necessary services and support to the families in need. It's obvious that homelessness is a complex issue and families who find themselves without a home require a broad range of services and supports in order to stabilize their situation and transition to more permanent housing. While I have no doubt that the MOC organization is well-intentioned and dedicated to serving the needs of homeless families, uh, I'm concerned um, that they may not have the resources to meet the full range of the needs of homeless families. One of the questions, and the reason why I have those concerns is that um, a couple of questions were raised two weeks ago, uh, and they have not been addressed uh, by mm, either the town officials or DHCD. I read the report, and specifically one of the questions that I have is how much staff are they dedicating to providing the security on site? Um, based on our state representative report, uh, which mentions that about 50 families that will be moved to the facility, I uh, extrapolated the numbers, um, and that brings us to about 175 people uh, to start with. I would like to know how much staff are they allocating to the security on site, and uh, I have not heard the answer uh, to that question. Um, I did see that MOC will provide transportation. Again, no details were given of what exactly that means. Uh, are there gonna be shuttles running and bringing uh, those families to the library, to Emerson playgrounds? These are families with small children. I have two small kids. Uh, even though uh, they are staying there for three to five days, that's still long enough uh, to be stuck in a small room with uh, small children and not having the access to the playground. Uh, were these questions raised? Were they addressed? Um, uh, I don't think we should be simply relying on the states on the statements that everything is taken care uh, by the mock. Um, the families who rely on the shelter are among the most vulnerable, vulnerable members of our community, and it's our job to make sure that they receive the care and support uh, in case there are any organizational challenges or disruptions that may arise. Um, uh, we, we will need to conclude. Your comments so, um, so we can start I urge the public the board here. to develop a contingency plan to ensure that the families who rely on this shelter are not left without adequate care and support in case of any organizational disruptions. And so far, I have not. Uh, what can I would like to get reassured that this facility can be run safely and efficiently, and usually that's done by providing details and numbers. So I urge you. Uh, to include homeless family shelter on your agenda uh, for next time and uh, be uh, more uh, aggressive in obtaining those details and providing them to the public. Thank Thanks you. for your comment. 
Uh, so we will now uh, adjourn to the hearing room uh, to Can begin just, the town um, meeting. Clarify something for really quick. Uh, um, we could do it in the hallway. I mean, does it need to be? Um, yes, it does. Okay, uh, go ahead. I just want to um, check with the town manager because I thought I heard the previous speaker state that um, the town had selected mock. And I just want to ask the town manager, um, it's the town, who selects mock? I did not say that. Oh, good. Okay, good. Okay, sorry. All right. Do we Let's adjourn to the hearing room for the public. Take our signs with us. We will continue in session as the select board here. Our next uh, mo uh, item on our agenda, which I will narrow the scope of, is to um, deliberate on positions on a few articles. But those articles, I would suggest, are, will be limited to Article 4, Article uh I don't know, 22? No, Article 4, Article 30, Article 32. How about that? And because in part, because uh, Mary Hartman is not here this evening, mm -hmm. and I think should have an opportunity to weigh in on any articles that have any controversy, but I did note, note that Articles 4, 30 and 32 did not have any okay. debate to speak of or, or right. concerns raised. All right. Are you looking for a motion? Or? Yes. Okay. Uh, I move that the select board support. All right. Have her, uh, recommend for affirmative right. action. Recommend affirmative action on articles four. Uh, I think we usually do them one at a time. And 30, all right. Article four. I so, vote that this, I move that the select board recommend affirmative action on Article Four. Okay. Do I have a second? We check it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now um, I only heard two of us. Whoops. Do, are you not voting in favor? Um. On Article Four. It's okay if you want to wait a week or two or three. You're not ready to vote. Yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not the... I know I'm not ready to vote on it because the there were categories um, that were yet to be defined. Positions yeah. yet to be defined. That's right. There were two that. Okay. Were, okay. All right. Then All right. Defer. All right. I move that the select board uh, recommend affirmative action on Article Thirty. And are you also concerned about that because the NRC has not ruled? Um. <clears throat> Perhaps we'll not get very far tonight. Maybe we should wait for Mary anyway. Okay. Well, yeah. I just I was hoping to just knock off a few of the uh -huh. easier ones tonight, but maybe that's backfiring. So um how about the demolition review bylaw though? Article 32. I think we might be able to come to agreement on that one. Changing from 45 days to 60 days. All right. Okay. All right. Let's try that. I recommend the select board. Uh, I, I move that the select board recommend affirmative action on Article 32. Do we have a second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Um, so now that takes us uh, back to uh, public comments. Um, so we, we had to uh, truncate our public oh. comment. So if there is a public comment, I would open the floor now to that possibility. Uh, I don't see any. So uh, then we had liaison Wait, reports. Excuse me. Oh, yes. I, I don't have a public comment, but I have a question. Could you yeah. repeat the time to which you continue this? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. On March 27th. All right. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. So... Um, so now I, I think we're going to skip liaison report tonight. Sounds like a good idea. And uh, I think it's time to adjourn. Oh. Right. Okay. You don't want Adjourning to at 10 p.m. exactly. You want to be here.